In this video, we're going to know use what we know about um, segments that we've been learning about in class and then add some algebra with it to find lengths of different segments. So your only objective is that you can use the segment addition property, which we'll talk about, and algebraic equations to find the length of segments. So in class, you guys have been looking at the vocab um, congruent. Remember, congruent are just two segments that are equal length. So here I have a segment. So I can call, give these points some names, A, B, and C. And if B is the midpoint of this segment, that means it's in the middle. That means A, B is congruent to B, C, which congruent just means equal. And I can write that as AB is congruent to BC. In other words, if this is 5, then BC is a length of 5, giving the whole length of 10. Um, I can also give you the entire length if you knew these two are congruent, and I knew the entire length was 18, and this is the midpoint, and these two segments are congruent, then they each have to be 9 using your logic. Secondly, we have the segment addition postulate, which is a very basic concept if you really think about it, and it's one you use. Um, and really what it states is that if you take two smaller lengths and make a bigger segment, so just, we'll call it X, Y, and Z, these two segments add up to the bigger segment. So this length is 3, and this length is 5, and the entire length has to be 8. So two smaller segments make the length of the bigger segment. Again, this is a concept you probably use a lot, it just you didn't know it had a proper name, which is the segment addition postulate. So we're going to use these concepts to help us find values of variables and then find the length of each segment. So notice here I have a segment, JE, ET, and then the bigger segment, JT, and we know JT is 22. And then we have two smaller segments, JE and ET. So I need to write an equation of how they relate to one another. Well, JE, you could think of, plus the length of ET equals the bigger segment, JT. I can replace these with what they actually equal. We know JE is 2x minus 3, ET is 3x, and JT is the length of 22. Now I can solve for x using solving equations that we've been working on and reviewing from last year. 2x plus 3x is 5x minus 3 equals 22. Add 3, 5x equals 25, divide by 5, x is the value of 5. So now we can use our value of x to figure out what each one equals. So je, which equals 2x minus 3. Instead of x, we can substitute in 5 or replace it. So I have 2 times 5 minus 3. So je equals 7. Now to get et, I have two options. I can, since I know this is 7, I can go 22 minus 7 to get this length to be 15. Or I can do what I did for je and go et, which equals 3x and 3 times 5 equals 15. Either way, and again you could have did ET first and then you could figure out what JE. And this is a good way to check to see if you did it right because 7 plus 15 is 22. So to find the value of each variable, find the length, and then find the length of each segment where KB, the entire segment is 46. And then it tells me that AC is 4M. 
Now again, we have these little tick marks, which means these are three congruent segments. So if AC is 4M, CK is 4M, and BA is 4M. Now there are um, different strategies you can use to solve this problem. Um, I'm going to actually show you two different ways you could think of it. One way you can you know that BA plus AC plus K CK equals BK. So you can get 4M plus 4M plus 4M equals 46. And then that's 12M equals 46 divided by 12. M comes out to be, it will be a decimal, 3.83 repeating. Or you could have wrote it as a fraction, which comes out to be 3 and 5, 6. All right. So then um, from here, so that's one way you could do it, and then you got what your value of your m is. Or another way you can look at it, if these three are all equal, to get the length of each individual one, I can go 46. Let's change colors so you know this is just a different way. Again, I'm doing the exact same thing, just showing you a different approach. 46. 46 divided by 3, because I'm going to get each individual part, which comes out to be 15 and a third, or 15.3 repeating. So that's what each part actually equals. And then I can solve for m by just going setting 1 for m equals 15.3 repeating because AC or CK or BA equals 4M or equals 15.3 repeating. Then I can just divide by 4 and I get my M to be 3.83 repeating or 3 and 5 6. Um, and then uh, the other part is that we need to find the length of each segment, which we actually already did, because if this is 46, we know this is 15.3 from what we did here. This is also 15.3 repeating, 15 and a third, and this is also 15.3 repeating, because all three of these are the same. All right, so on C, point B is between A and C. So we have three points, A, B, and C. And we know B is in between A and C, so B should be in the middle, A and C. And then so I'm going to draw my segment, and it's on segment AC. Use the given information to write the equation in terms of, should be X, we have X's here. Solve the equation and find AB and BC. So again, I always like with my diagrams to write everything on there, so it helps me think of what's going on. So it says AB is 2x minus 5, BC is 6x, and then the entire thing is 10x minus 9. So we know the entire segment is made up of two smaller segments. If I add AB this length, to that length. And you don't need to do this step. Um, I just do it to help you figure out what's going on. All right, so AC, we know that's 10x minus 9 equals 2x minus 5 plus 6x. Now I'm just going to use my algebra, combining like terms on my right side. I have 8x minus 5 minus 8x. I'm going to do two steps at once because you guys are at hopefully at that skill level that you can see ahead. 
So I'm going to add my 9 over the other side and move my 8x. So I get 2x equals 4 divided by 2. x equals 2. All right. So we wrote the equation. We solved the equation. We get x equals 2. And now we need to find the length of AB and BC. So I can plug in 2 into each one. So AB, which equals 2x minus 5. I can replace the x or substitute the 2 in for x. And I equals negative 1. And then BC equals 6 x, so 6 times 2, which is 12. And then if you would plug it in up here, you get 20 minus, which is 11, which negative 1 plus 12 is 11. Now, the only issue I have in this, and this happens when you don't do the problem beforehand, you normally shouldn't get a negative number. Um, it's just the way it worked out that it did, um, because lengths are always usually positive in geometry but it's more getting the concept than really having a real situation. If we were doing a real life example, then it would come out to be a positive number. All right, so just to review, um, remember the segment addition postulate. It's a very important postulate where two or more segments make up a bigger segment, just adding them together. So you're adding segments, makes sense. Um, a G congruent segments are just, they're the same length. One is five, the other one's five. So forth and really just use your common sense what do you give you write things on the diagram geometry is using a lot of your logic reminders to do your reflections to get credit for watching this video